Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and I want to wish you a Happy New Year, specifically Happy Chinese New Year, Year of the Horse. Today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable paper drum, which I have to say is one of the least annoying musical instruments your child can make. So you can show your kids how to make it, you can use this for a classroom craft activity, or just something fun to do with your kids or grandkids. We're going to be using supplies today from our sponsor, Paper Mart. You can check them out online at www.papermart.com, your source for packaging and more. Let's go to the table and I'll show you how to put this cute drum together. Here are the supplies I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using satin rat tail cord from Paper Mart. This is the best value on this particular type of cording. I really love it for my jewelry making projects and it's perfect for any um, Chinese themed project because it's got that beautiful uh, cording like they used to make their knots with and whatnot but it's also a jewelry supply staple um, so do check these out if you're a jewelry maker I'm also decided I wanted to have a little extra um, flare on my next uh, drum so I'm gonna use some Lorex ribbon and also some red thin raffia ribbon because just those extra textures will make it very nice um, I've got a couple gold doilies these come in packages of a hundred and um, I've got some wooden beads for my basic crafts supply stash and also you're gonna need a 6 by 12 inch piece of paper and a couple um, two and a half by three and a half inch squares of white cardstock as well as a popsicle stick or a coffee stir or a skinny stick you want um, you just want a stick to hold for your drum pretty easy so the first thing we're gonna do is take our paper and we're gonna fold it in half just like you were making a card and this is great because you can get two drums out of one 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, um, which is really, uh, it's really nice when you can find a way to really make best use of your supplies, especially when you're working with children. Now I'm going to glue a gold doily to each side. If you're using, um, if you're doing this in a classroom setting, use regular white glue. Since I'm, I'm doing this here for a video and I want it to be dry quickly, I'm going to use my hot glue gun. And, um, you know, if you're using hot glue, use a, use a low temperature gun because you don't want to burn your hands. Don't burn your hands off. Although it's so cold <laughs> right now, I'm, I might try to burn myself with a glue gun. Oh my gosh, it's so cold in Maine today. Holy moly. It's so cold, my coffee turned into a colada. Flip it over, do the same thing to the other side. It's so cold, there was a snowman on my doorstep asking to come inside. Oh my gosh. It was like 50 degrees yesterday and then it was like 14 today and windy. It's crazy. I'll definitely stay home and craft. I'm actually going to do this project with the kids at my local library and maybe the uh, the fourth grade in the school uh, this year. I think it's just such a fun and easy and cute project and a great way to do uh, multicultural crafts. All right. So we've got that glued on each side, kind of like a card. And what we're going to do is take some scissors and we're going to cut off the corners. That way nobody has to, you know, get out a circle cutter or anything. It will kind of, you know, have a cool shape. Not quite a hexa, not quite an octagon, not quite a circle. It's kind of a neat shape here. All right. Now we're going to open it up. And we're going to cut a length of our satin rat tail cord. This comes in one and a half millimeters, two millimeters, and three millimeters. I have the two millimeter, I believe. Yeah, the two millimeter. I really like this because I do a lot of jewelry making and um, knot work and like Shambhala bracelets. The two millimeter is ideal and you can't find a better price. This is between eight and ten dollars for a spool, but you get 200 yards and the closest I found this is fifteen dollars a spool and that's from one of my like wholesale jewelry um, suppliers, so it's really a great deal. Now what you want to do is grab a couple beads. These um, were given to me from a friend and I just really love the um, the design on them. I would go with something like a wooden bead or like a red or gold, some bead that's in a similar, similar color family. It doesn't have to be exact. We're just looking for the um, you know to get the same feel for the project and what I'm going to do since this is a really large hole bead you can just tie a knot on the end if the bead doesn't have such a big hole but since this is such a big hole bead I'm actually just going to do a little um, square knot here and I'll pull it as tight as I can I'm just going to tug on the bead make sure that's there. really good and do the same for the other I got my glue gun rusting on my plastic <laughs> Matt, this is probably not the best practice in the craft room, but I'm not going to leave it there too long, so don't fret about that, please. There we go. It's so cold here. I actually set my finger on the tip of the glue gun, and it was like minutes before I noticed it was hot. Oh my gosh. 
All right, what I'm gonna do is run a bead of glue down the center here. It's so cold, even the good humor man is in a bad mood. <laughs> I know, don't quit your day job, right, Lindsay? <laughs> All right, and now we're gonna glue that uh, that stick in there. What do I do with my extra little stick? Here it is. I'm just gonna um, put a little bit of glue down here and stick that on there. And at this time, I want to add those uh, extra ribbons I told you about because I thought the the uh, this little drum could use a little more flair. So what I'm gonna do is just cut a couple lengths of ribbon and I'll just secure it in here when I um, while I'm gluing everything down. I think like that would look nice. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of fold it and put a glob of glue. Do it right on top of that. And the more glue that we're adding, you may be thinking, oh my gosh, what a, you really going to town with that glue gun. But really, it's going to add a little more stability to the, um, to the drum too. And I want to add some of this, um, this red raffia. Now, when you're, when you're ordering, um, ordering supplies, because Paper Mart, you end up getting a lot for your money. So you're going to end up with, with lots of material. So what I like to do is I like to think about what am I going to use this for? Well, red, I'll use for Valentine's Day. I'll use for Christmas, um, used for Chinese New Year. So I try to think of like when I'm like when I'm buying this cording, I buy it in um, black, cream, and brown because I know I'll use mostly those colors for my jewelry projects as well as the kids craft projects. I mean red might be a nice addition too. So I try to think about that when I'm placing an order to make sure that um, I get the most versatile product. So think about what you might be crafting throughout the year, um, especially if you're doing crafts with kids because you go through a lot of supplies. And then um, and then place your order so you can really get the most out of your supplies because the quantities of stuff from Paper Mart are huge. I have a huge pack of doilies, so I'm thinking of different things I can do with the doilies. So just keep that in mind when you are ordering. Now I'm just going to smush this flat and hold it for a couple minutes. Not even minutes, really, because it's so cold down here. It only takes seconds for my hot glue to dry. <laughs> How cold is it, Lindsay? I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm going. I'm going a little loopy from the cold from the winter. I get the winter crazies, <laughs> not the winter blues. I don't get the winter blues. I get the winter crazies. All right. So there, and as it is, we got a decent drum. See? And I want to spruce it up a little bit more and make it, um, you know, you're the horse theme. So what I have is a couple pieces of white paper. They're artist trading card size. I just trimmed them from regular cardstock. And we're going to do a little stamping. And these uh, stamps I'm going to use are from About Art Accents, and they are Year of the Horse stamps. So, and here's a little trick. So if you don't have a lot of ink pads, something you can do to really maximize your stamping budget is to get some nice watercolor markers. And um, these are by, I'm using a couple aqua markers by Letraset, the people that make Pro Marker. And I've got a distress marker, but I have found that pretty much all water-based markers will work together. So, you know, try it with your kids' Crayola markers or your kids' Crazy Art markers or whatever they have, you know, before you go out and buy you know, stamping ones because they might work just fine. So I'm just dabbing on some brown. I use some red, some brown. I just try to copy the colors I've already used in a project so that everything kind of goes together. I'm going to dab on some black. And this is a trick I learned from um, Lisa over at Local King Rubber. She had a really cool demonstration in her booth and she just dabbed on the black after she colored her thing with markers. It looked awesome. Now I'm actually going to spritz this with a little water right off camera so you don't have to, so I don't spray my whole project. And then um, I've got a little foam mat under me to help my stamping um, work out well. And there we've got this really cool horse image. And then I can decorate it with um, with some other images. Or I think actually for this one, I've got it centered up pretty good. I'm just going to stamp on this 2014. And I'll do it up in the corner here. And that will be on one side of my of my fan. And then I'll just stamp something else for the back. I think I'll use this little samurai on a horse. Again, I'm just going to use those same three colors because it always seems to look good when you keep the colors, you keep the same colors over and over again. You can't go wrong when you keep um, when you keep dipping into the same colors. So if you're nervous about color, it's a great tip. And again, I'm doing just the kind of coloring it in and I'm going to dab on some black just to give it that uh, kind of natural look. I want it to kind of look like a watercolor or like a sumi-e picture. So by spritzing it with the water before I stamp, I get a little bit more blending and a little bit more, it looks a little bit more like the, um, like the Chinese brush painting. All right. And then I have a couple other little decorator decoration stamps. I think I might use 
this one up here in the corner. I'll do it in red. I love how, look how bright that, that's a watercolor marker and it still stands out so bright on my, on my stamp. So use what you have and if that doesn't work then, that one I'll just breathe on, then go and, um, then go and invest. But I always like to try to see what I have first and see if I can make that work. That's how, that's how you, uh, that's how you do frugal right. You see what you have, can you make it work? If not, then go spend the money. All right, we're going to glue that. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Glue that onto our fan here, which is, we'll zoom out a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. And again, like I said, the hot glue actually adds, I got to put a glue stick in here. <laughs> I ran out of glue. So I'm telling you, I'm using some serious hot glue today. Hoping the, uh, the radiant heat from the hot glue gun <laughs> will warm me up a little bit. I'll flip it over and glue the other image on just right over here so I hope you're staying warm I hope you're uh, having some lovely time indoors this January to craft and um, if you have an opportunity to teach children art this is a great project to do it with Again, I want to thank our sponsor, Paper Mart, for sponsoring our video today and giving me these great supplies to work with. You can find them online at www.papermart.com, where we make you look even better. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.